Hello, welcome to the Lyman Wolf Podcast. I am your host, Raceland, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Nate. Howdy. Uh, and how, how are you doing today, Nate? Doing all right. Uh, how about yourself there, Raceland? Well, I was going to bring that up because I might sound a little different because I'm f- kind of uh, rocking a cold over here, so if I sound strange, that's why I sound strange. So, on today's podcast, we are going to be talking about your pick for the subject matter, and that is the She-Hulk Review. We just finished up the She-Hulk series yesterday, um, was the final episode, and we're going to be talking about our opinions on the Disney Plus original She-Hulk. Nate, Nate what made you want to pick this uh, pick this topic? Yeah, just I've been enjoying the series, and I know you've been watching it too, so I figured we could just talk about it and what not yeah yeah i mean i know she hulk is very controversial online the internet is very very mixed oh yeah if you ever go to twitter twitter is very mixed on the show i uh i don't really get onto pretty much any social media so i'm not sure yes he is a very huge online presence if you didn't know check him out on all of his link trees at oh wait there's nothing there exactly <laughs> So uh, let's just dive in. Um, I guess we'll start with you, Nate. Uh, you can start off your opinions on She-Hulk. Uh, so first off the bat, I am not a She-Hulk comic book fan. I, Or rather, I don't read any of them. See, I am. I've read a bunch of She-Hulk comics. Uh, I'm not. I haven't read really any of her stuff. I've seen her in a few, like when she has appeared in other stuff like Avengers and stuff like that. Uh, But again, I'm not really that big into reading uh, the Hulks. I've never really, I never really liked Bruce Banner Hulk comics. Uh, The show, the old school show, was pretty good. The movies are pretty good. Are you talking about the old school show with, um, what was that dude's name? Where it was like the 70s and they had two different actors to play the Hulk and Bruce. Where they had was an actual Lou, was it, bodybuilder. Was it Lou Ferrigno? Was that him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the quintessential human Hulk. Which is uh, Cyronic because of the final episode of She-Hulk. Yes. Um, we'll get we'll get into that later. It's just, I thought that was yeah. so funny. I, yeah. So one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because I really did like the whole uh series this they did a great job with this series well real Um, quick so you were talking about how i have read the comics not all of them i've read some and when they announced this like a year or two ago as she hulk was coming out i was one of the few people that was like really hyped because i'd read the comics but the show is nothing like i expected it to be i was expecting like a uh, moon knight style disney show or marvel show like I was expecting sort of an action-y, adventure type of She-Hulk. Obviously, in the comics, that's not 100% what she is. She's a lawyer. She she is more into the breaking the fourth wall, which is great. But I expected to run more like Deadpool when he did his. Not like twerking with Megan the Stallion in the courtroom kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I. it had a lot of good references of just modern-day kind of stuff yeah it definitely tried it definitely knew what it was it didn't try to take itself seriously at all no um and that was good on its part because it broke the mold of regular marvel stuff it's actually i've really enjoyed a lot of the uh i guess this is phase four yeah i think so uh i've really enjoyed a lot of the phase four series that they've been putting out uh, with the only one I haven't seen is the Miss Marvel one, so I'm not sure about it. Oh boy, I've had an entire opinion on Miss Marvel. <laughs> yeah, uh, but everything I have seen, I've enjoyed because they've all have kind of fit into their own niches rather than going with the flow of the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, which uh, I I. That's why I didn't know what to expect. I mean, even before the trailer, I was like, it's going to be like any other Marvel show. It's going to be like Falcon Winter Soldier. It's going to be like Moon Knight. It's going to be like you know, Daredevil. It's going to be like one of those. Just like any other 
MCU yeah. show, and it complete opposite. See, Moon Knight and uh, Falcon Winter Soldier are, to me, very different. Well, they're action uh, shows. Okay, so okay, that's what that's what I meant. Is there most of the MCU is action with a little bit of comedy mixed in? That's what okay. most MCU is. All right. So I, I expected it to run like that, like the formula has been running for the last what fifteen years. Yeah. So overall, I would probably give this out of uh like ten. I'd probably give this like an eight point five. Oh wow, nine. That's high for you. Uh, well, I'm a big fan of fourth four wall breaking stuff. I'm a big fan of comedy. I'm a big fan of uh. Sort of romance, not really. They're like, you're a big fan of romance. Don't even try to show. No, I'm talking about with this show. Oh, okay. I thought the you were show, saying you didn't like romance. I'm like, okay, Nate. The show hints at some romance, but it's not like it's not prevalent thing, and it's the romance in itself is actually the thing that hurt the most in this. Hold on, hold me. on, real quick. Fair warning, anybody who's listening, we are going to be spoiling the crap out of this show. This is not a spoiler-free podcast. This is spoilers galore. If you have not finished the show, you might want to tap out and come back. We are spoiling the hell out of this show. Continue, Nate. Yeah, so the like the little bit of romance we actually did get, and I was like super happy about what like it turned out bad. I was like, ah, that hurts so much. And then yeah, it that part was messed up. Uh so how you want how did you feel about this show? I thought it was good. I definitely don't think it deserved all the hate it's getting online. Like I said, you don't dive into social media, but I do. And yeah. man, like if you go to IMDb, I think it has a 5 out of 10. Uh, I'm actually on IMDb. Let's see. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's got negative reviews. Yes, yeah, so a 5.1 out of 10. That's not That's good for an MCU project at all. That's like... That's like a... 2003 Hulk level. Yeah. Oh, no. What? <laughs> the very first, uh, the featured review uh, by Who cares? Artful, yeah, Artful DP. Don't hate me because I'm not green. Watching the first episode was like going on a blind date with a woman where straight away you can tell that it's not going to go well. And that's a lot of the negative things I've been seeing is that people are like, wow, they really show how shitty men are in this show. They're like, everybody yeah. hates on, like, wow, this show's really targeting men. Screw men in this show, right? If you're a man, you're either buff and dumb. That's all you can be is buff and dumb. And I'm like, uh, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't agree with that. But overall, is for my opinion, for the show, I give it like a 7.5. Like, I like a C plus. That's... I think I have a rating of all the MCU shows, and I think I put it like third from the bottom. I think it was only like seven of them an hour and hour or something like that. Uh, yeah, probably. So, uh, so along those lines, nothing is going to be lower than Miss Marvel, and that's all I'm getting into that part. But yeah, I think I put it like third or fourth from the bottom. Okay. Pretty uh, pretty middle of the road. I will say it does focus more on positive femininity. Uh, oh yeah, which, it makes sense. It's She Hulk. Yeah, like that's not a bad thing. I don't really see why people are like you can have that without bashing on guys. Well, look at what was really... the last project we had, which was what Moon Knight. Was that the last one that we had? Mm. I think so. I thought, I thought Miss Marvel came out after. Moon oh Knight. yeah, yeah. So everybody's just getting off the hype of like Loki. You know, Daredevil's now involved. You know, uh, WandaVision, all the action-y shows. And then people get thrown Miss Marvel and She-Hulk, which are like like Disney-fied superheroes. And people are like, what the hell is this? We don't want this. We want our action-y shows. And that's what people are crapping all over the show about. It's because they want more action and less romance, less woke shit. That's what the internet's saying, is they want less uh, woke shit. Yeah, I I don't agree. I don't agree that it was woke shit for this. I think I don't either. I, that's just job. what the internet's saying. Yeah. Um 
So are there anything, is there anything in particular that you would like to point out that you liked for this? I mean, are we just diving into the episodes or? Sure. Uh, if you want to go episode by episode or if you're wanting to just go overall. Overall, because I'm not going to remember what happened in every episode. Not going to lie. Understandable. Um, There's one negative that I don't like. Um, okay. And it's pretty minor, honestly. It's not even really it's a negative. It's just an observation. I don't like the fact that they changed the origin story of the powers again. Like, obviously they did it to fit the MCU. But in the comic books, it does happen in a car accident. There's a major car accident. Jennifer Walters goes to the hospital and she has a blood transfusion because her cousin uh, Bruce is the only one that matches her blood blood type. So she has a blood transfusion and that's how she gets her powers. Okay. I, I would say that the way they handled that is probably better. Agreed. That's why I said originally I thought I was going to say it's a negative, but it's not really a negative. It's just, they yeah. changed her origin. Yeah. Because to save time, especially to save time and get the first episode out there and get the whole origin out of the way so the story could be progressed, her just getting blood in her system after a cut, like, but doesn't makes that... a lot of... Sorry, go ahead. It makes a lot of sense because, at least to me, because the she- with the She-Hulk... Uh, show it is verifying that the Edward Norton movie was the f- like he is the MCU Hulk just well, without Edward Norton. They've always said that. I know, but I'm saying like it clarifies that with well, like the actual minute details. And that brings me to an actual negative: is like, doesn't that mean that anybody could become a Hulk? Like if Bruce Banner. You know, no, not necessarily. strips his blood into an open wound. Doesn't it mean that anybody can be a Hulk now? Not necessarily. Because the Edward Norton thing, Stan Lee's cameo in that had a heart attack because he couldn't handle the gamma radiation blood that dripped into the beverage that... Oh, yeah. Drank. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, do you think so it was just because they were blood-related? That why? Yeah. Okay. And that's why... Bruce was wanting to do tests on her right off the bat was because he wanted to make sure that's what was going to happen and he was curious to see how her DNA because yeah they share same genetics but obviously they are still different beings that's why she's able to have a more controlled version of herself rather than an alternate personality like Bruce does okay, yeah that makes more sense Um, that's actually like one of the things that kind of went with the whole Todd character in this. Which series. one was Todd again? Todd is the guy who is obsessed with the Hulk. Oh, the one who wanted powers. Yeah, the complete douchebag. Uh, that doesn't um, narrow it down to most of the guys on the show. Yeah. Well, like this guy's like, he was so much so that he named himself Hulk King. That yeah. was his username. Uh, and he kept trying to get jennifer's dna which the, on one hand he got it in the most douchiest way possible yeah that was like that's that sucked yeah i really oh was i happy. totally called that like as soon as she brought the guy home to sleep with him i immediately knew that's what's happening and i was like oh that guy is definitely working for the organization see i actually like no nah, that was so hinted at well hold on Up until the point that he actually stayed, like, when it showed him gone the next morning, that's when I was like, oh, crap, please tell me he's not Hulk King. Oh, I I I didn't, I knew he wasn't Hulk King. King. No, no. I knew Uh, that this guy worked for that organization the entire time. But, yeah, well, I guess, I don't know if he actually, I guess... He, yeah, David he said, he said, I hired somebody. You, th- yeah. like, He goes, you think that that guy was there for you? He's like, no, I hired him. I know. I'm saying like my mentality of working for the organization is like an actual loyal member. Like all the other guys there were. Yeah. Down with Where women. This- Hulk. They don't belong to. The- <laughs> yeah. This guy was just apparently a hired dude. Um, I want to. Like, he took one for I'm- the team though. 
My biggest <laughs> issue with like her trying to find out the people behind that website and Hulk King and all that, she literally got attacked by the construction guys with uh, Norse or Asgardian tech uh, construction equipment. And then never explained it. Well, and one of them is at Abomination's retreat. Yeah, so going into that, the entire time, like towards the end of the series, I thought that dude's going to be like, oh, oh yeah, by the way, the Hulk King is him. And then, yeah. and he like, he never says anything. Like, she just thinks that he attacked her for no reason, whereas he knew that they were after her blood. Like, they... He what, knew the reason. Once they became friends, you think he would say, oh, by the yeah. way. <laughs> like the entire time during the episode where they're in the group therapy thing and she's sharing all these details about how she just, she thought she had finally found a guy who like Jen and not She-Hulk and all these things. And I'm like, I'm just waiting for that one guy to be like, oh, I wonder if this is connected to the guy who hired me oh, to you get mean, your blood. You mean so-and-so? Oh yeah, that guy. I know that guy. Yeah, well, they may not even know each other. Like, it, that in itself, they may not know each other. That guy seemed but, kind of like a dumbass, though. Yeah, but it still would have, like, crossed my mind, be like, oh, we're friends now. You do realize someone is, like, paying people to get your blood, right? Like, I feel like that would have been something to be brought up in group therapy. Or private, who knows. Uh, but, like, the whole thing with josh i felt so bad because i'm like oh this is this is good romance okay th nice they're taking it slow go okay nope it it was all ploy and i was like ah. what did you think of that episode where she had to defend her title as she hulk and she has all of those exes all those that bad dates brutal. all those bad dates come to oh no yeah i didn't like jennifer walters i only did it for she hulk especially the doctor dick like fuck him uh, <laughs> like the moment he's like yeah she looks hot and the moment he sees jen he's like i'm who out you? like uh, who, the, who the hell are you yeah <laughs> like i have no interest in you bring out the big green girl like mm, fuck off bro <laughs> not cool uh that it that like i wanted to hit him and i don't like violence <laughs> Yeah, th that guy sucked. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was rough. I will say one of the things that I didn't like about the series was I liked Abomination's redemption arc. See, I was going to ask what you thought about uh, Abomination. Yeah, I liked his uh, redemption arc, especially the little tie-in with the Shang-Chi uh, cameo he had. That, that was that, really cool. That wasn't Shang-Chi. Yeah, it was. No, Shang-Chi wasn't in the show. No, in the movie Shang-Chi, he oh, makes a cameo that's in what the you fight meant. That's with what you, Wong. I, okay, I was. I thought you were like, I thought, for a second I thought you thought Wong was Shang-Chi. I'm like, no, Nate, you're no, wrong. <laughs> I'm saying I liked that they mentioned his cameo in Shang-Chi. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, that was a nice little tie-in to, because a lot, one of the things I've heard from people is that they feel like a lot of the Marvel stuff now isn't very interconnected. What? Like all, like all of... Well, I mean, it, in some way, it kind of makes sense, that argument. I, because, go to, I go to day one premieres because it's going to be spoiled for me, and I don't want to... Like, I can't miss a movie or a show because there's something tied into the next series. Well, okay, something, but there's usually a lot more, I especially. People I don't agree gotten, with that statement at all. People have gotten used to the Avengers style of movies, like multiple characters are usually tied into multiple movies. Lately, it hasn't been that way. And I'm glad I don't want that. No, I'm fine with it. I'm just saying, like, I can understand if you're expecting that you might be a little disappointed. Yeah, I'm actually glad they kind of, you know, brought it back a little bit because it was to the point where it's like if I even missed a, Yeah, if I miss an episode of something and it's like I don't know what the hell's going on. Like my wife didn't watch Loki. And when they hint at stuff that happened in Loki, she's like, 
what the hell is going on? I'm like, yeah, you missed one of the most important parts of the upcoming MCU. Plus, Loki's just a really great show. Um, <laughs> so, back to Abomination. I liked that they gave him a redemption arc. I liked that they tied it with the Shang-Chi movie. That was really cool. The final episode. That was the weirdest episode I've ever seen in Marvel. I will say it was extremely weird. I don't like what they did with Abomination. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what you were going to think about that. Cause I know, because cause you like his redemption arc. Well, like he's still redeemed. He's not like of doing evil stuff. But the reason I am upset with it is because earlier in the series we are seen or we are shown how his parole officer freaks out when his power restrainer is on the fritz so he could become abomination and so he asks uh she hulk to go up with him just in case and like uh abomination does not become that he stays blonsky uh he's like yeah no that is behind me he has shown progress as a character like i don't need to be abomination to be who i am i have this retreat i help other villains kind of recover and be better people like this he's doing great and then the final episode he's abomination uh, without uh, any explanation uh, uh sort of sort of you know, he is abomination he's able to transform oh like that, that's what you i thought you meant like he's going back to his ways as abomination i'm like no i'm saying like really he be able to transform he has a power dampener anklet you know how easy i see people like all the time take yeah. off like their what are they called those um those monitor bracelets that you have to get when you're like in house arrest. People get around that stuff. He's abomination. He probably can okay. hire some tech guy to just make it First look off, like he's attached to abomination it. Abomination has spent all of his money on that retreat. I don't think he has a surplus of cash. I don't know. That's all anymore. speculation, Nate. Come on, man. I, I'm, I know. But so is that. Like, he That's can get true. around it. Blonsky is not that intelligent, nor is. Like he again, even if that were the case, I would be even more disappointed because that he is actively going out and trying to do shady shit oh, to see, get around it. See, I never believed once that he was reformed. I the entire yeah, I, do. I the entire series, I was waiting for him to be and like, I, Oh, this is all a facade so I can get out of prison. That's it. And I expected that. Yeah. He still is reformed by the end of the series. Like he's He's just now living with Wong instead of in his retreat for villains. Like it, he's still a good reformed character. Speaking he's of Wong, what did you now think, able to turn? What did you think of that ending when Wong broke him out of prison? Yeah, like now. First off, Wong is like, what's up with Wong? Is he like a quote unquote hero? Like. He does oh, yeah. such. He's the source of supreme. I know that, but he does such shady shit half the time. Okay, so th that's the thing about Wong is Wong firmly believes, apparently, because in the course of the series, he does not really believe that he is upheld to the laws of man. He is upheld to the laws of the cosmos. It's true. Look at how um, he reacted in court. Yeah. Um, which, okay, understandable, but you still got to obey the laws when you're interacting with said people who are bound by the laws of man. Like, like what that episode when he's, uh, Abomination's trial and he's like, wait, did you just admit to kidnapping Bolonsky from prison? He's like, oh, I gotta go. It's <laughs> out like, uh, like, I don't. That's the thing about Wong, it just confuses me a little, because we've seen Wong being pragmatic and pr a very wise character in his decisions. He, he didn't seem very wise in this. He, no, not he at all. Comic relief uh, in this series, which on one hand I liked because it was hilarious and I do love me some good comedy. On the other, it seemed weird that Wong, the Sorcerer, uh, the Sorcerer Supreme, just could not grasp man-made laws. <laughs> like, like, no, no. 
I don't obey by your rules. Yeah, you're like what do you what do you mean? Like now you've got to follow these law like no I don't like Wong what is going on uh that part I wasn't too happy about I did like that he broke abomination out uh ah uh, see I don't like that because it's so sketchy like see, I it, it's proving that Wong is like oh this villain quote unquote okay. hey 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 ah uh, uh, he's still a villain abomination may be reformed but he's still a villain because he by by the laws, as you just said, he is a villain. Okay. I can't I won't say that I understand the superhero laws of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh Jennifer didn't go into detail of the laws, but fairly certain people who are not uh People who cause the kind of damage that heroes do, like that, the whole Sokovia Accords were created because of what Cap and the Avengers did, right? Just to help people. Uh, so the laws do get kind of bent in that regard. Uh, Abomination served his time. Okay. Abomin yeah. Like he Well, he's maybe, been in jail since 2008. I mean, if we're going by when the movie came out, so Yeah. Well, I'm talking about even in the show. He served his time. They said he served his time. He is he was just on parole at that point. He just broke his parole again for I I, I have really have no idea why. The, he their had, explanation. They said he had a guest speaking event. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, at a rally against She-Hulk. I don't even think he realized what the rally was for. Like, again, the last episode was really weird because even Jennifer was confused about what all was going on. That's why she went to go see K-E-V-I-N. Kevin Foggy. Uh, yeah, the robot Kevin. Okay, uh, am I the uh, only one when that scene, when she went to the Disney Plus menu, I was like, what the fuck just happened to my device? Yeah, I will say I thought my dog like sat on the remote or something. Because I, I use a Roku, and I was like, "Did I? Is my Roku broken? What's happening?" Yeah, I thought my dog sat my on my remote, and I realized my dogs were in the other room. I'm like, "Oh!" And then I heard Jen start talking. I'm like, "Oh, okay." Oh, uh, see, it's my wife had no clue. Like, she had no clue what was happening when she watched it. <laughs> yeah, I I figured out pretty because they had. She started breaking the fourth wall a lot in this episode. Well, that's not, uh, like that's one of the complaints I saw was like towards the first like few episodes, people were like, "Isn't she supposed to be like Deadpool breaking the fourth wall?" She's barely done it, and then the final episode, half the episode is that. I mean, every episode that has has had a fourth wall moment where I agree, like, but people on yeah. the internet were complaining that wasn't enough. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, then they should definitely be happy with. Yeah. The last episode because the last that was, episode was crazy, dude. To the point where she literally altered the storyline of her own reality. Yeah, she uh, was like, Why is this guy just becoming a bad Hulk? This is stupid. Yeah. So like, oh, snap, erased. Okay, let's just fix that. And okay, so that is the second issue I had with Blonsky. Because she had a moment where she could have been like, Why did Blonsky do all this? Like, why why have you made him go become abomination? Be like, you know what? You're correct. We shouldn't have done that. And brought like made that to where Blonsky had actually interrupted the rally. Nah. Nah. Nope. He's still He's... somehow the guest speaker <laughs> there. Uh yep. and again, I still don't think Blonsky knew what the rally was for because when he got up there, he's just like talking about like power. Like he's just like you guys don't like being uh, picked around and all that. I'm like, you you do realize they're against you. And then when Jennifer comes in, he's just like, oh, Jim, what's up? Like, what are you doing He's not here? worried about the rally being against She-Hulk. He's worried about her, like, realizing that he's just broken parole. Also, when the guy, she was like, where's Belaski? I need to talk to him. And the guy was like, oh, he has a prior engagement. I immediately was like, oh, the rally's at the resort. Yeah. <laughs> well, once they showed the inside of the resort, like where the rally was, I was like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the building they have the group sessions in? Oh, 
Like, I was like, oh. But then I was thinking that the Asgardian construction guy actually was a part of the rally there. And I was like, oh, no, he nope, he just wants to serve tea. That's it. Yep, that guy was innocent as a hell, dude. He's, he's, yeah. re- he's reformed. Yeah, well, mm. again, so is Blonsky. He's not committing crimes. He's just turning into he's the abomination. A, he's just a dumbass. Yeah. Again, I I just don't understand why he did the presentation. Like, that part of the story made absolutely no sense. It made, it made about as much sense as Titania showing right. up there. So, this is going to be my next thing I wanted to get into, transition into. What did you think of Titania as a character in the series? So, I don't know anything about her I don't either. in the comics. I have no uh, idea. I've never seen her in the comics. So I don't know if that's supposed to be like a comic book accurate. Or I don't care what. about that. I meant what your thoughts are on the actual character in the show. I mean, she she's a bitch. She I didn't mean, she... serve much of a purpose in the series besides I taking your name. That's it. That was she, her whole purpose. I feel like she w- she did serve a purpose because first off, she exposes Jennifer Walters as She-Hulk in court. Uh... Because when she breaks through the wall and Jen has to save the jury, she turns into the She-Hulk. So she did have that point. She exposed her as She-Hulk. Then she tried to take She-Hulk's name. Then she tried to defeat She-Hulk at the wedding, which I that part, again, didn't really make sense. Yeah, she either. just kind of showed up out of nowhere places. Yeah. Uh, she was the foil to try to create chaos in jennifer walter's storyline um not sure like i don't know i don't like the character me either but the situations that she brought about i enjoyed because we got we got to see how jen would react to those types of situations okay okay so the next Uh, oh good but other than that like i don't really have anything to say about her yeah that's basically what i thought so the next one i want to bring up is the elephant in the room daredevil what did you think about daredevil this was like the big break from the netflix daredevil finally coming to the mcu it's finally going to get introduced everybody's been hyping about this ever since that little tiny teaser of his costume what was your thoughts on his role in the series uh i liked it I um, loved his role. Still hate the costume. Hate, yeah, no, that costume I is not a great costume. I hate the costume. Oh. And I understand in the comics, that's his first suit. He has the original yellow and red colors. That's his original costume. I get it. There's a reason it got changed very early on in the series, because it sucks. Um, he, looks like say- a, he looks like a walking around as a mustard bottle. Must have been ketchup package, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say the costume color scheme, not great. The costume look is pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like the Marvel or the uh, the Netflix Daredevil costume. It looks very close to that. Different color scheme. Yeah, Um, exactly, and I hate the colors. It cracked me up when he did the Walk of Shame. That was so funny. Yeah, that that cracked me up. Her best friend came in and was like, Oh my god, you're not gonna believe what I just saw. I saw Daredevil doing the walk of shame. That was hilarious. And she's like, wait. Well, did you have something to do with that? I don't think she called him Daredevil. She just said a guy in a devil costume. Well, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it was just like, wait, <laughs> Jen, did you have something to do with that? And so he's like, ah, yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> Which, yeah, that I liked his... I liked pretty much every appearance he had in the show. He did great. So uh, I don't know in the comics if they hook up. I'm sure they do, but I never I read. I, I never read those comics. The comic book, the main one I read, was the series where she hooked up with Tony Stark. All right. So the only Daredevil stuff I read was when we did our Daredevil episode, and on a different channel. Was it on a different channel? Yeah, it wasn't on this podcast. Oh. Anyway, uh. I could have sworn we did a live action and com- combining them. It was on a different ep- uh, different channel. Okay. That either matter. way. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Either way, that is all I read. I read the origin story of Daredevil. So I didn't, I haven't read any more of his comics. Other, oh, I did read the, uh, uh, 
twenty ninety nine Daredevil and I think Daredevil Noir. But other than that, I didn't read anything else. Yeah, I have no idea um, out of the comics if they hook up. Yeah, I in any of the stuff I read, which again, very little, he never hooked up with She Hulk. Uh, but in the comics, She Hulk is known to kind of sleep around. Yeah, she is pretty promiscuous, which, meh, no problem. Uh, and I thought that was a pretty cool tie in when she did like the dating app kind of thing. Yeah, I did like that. Uh, it also really just made me sad for her because, like, every time she'd go, it introduced Todd. And I, I really don't like Todd, which kind of. Eh, because I like the actor. He's funny. Uh, I first noticed him in a show called Miracle Workers with Daniel Radcliffe. I've heard of it, never seen it. it it's a good show. If, would recommend anybody to pick it up. Uh, so I like the actor. I, And it's a testament to the actor because I like his character in, or characters in Miracle Workers, but I, I hate Todd so much. Uh, he does such a good job of making an unlikable character. It uh, He annoyed me so much. But yeah, uh, I think Daredevil was a great addition to the show, obviously because they're both lawyers. I think it's kind of funny how he was the lawyer against her is how he got introduced. Mm-hmm. I thought that was I, kind of, I knew that was coming. So I kind of expected at the end of the series that they would end up working together. Mm -mm. Um, Not at all. I did not think that at all. Well, because the reason I thought that is because, uh, like, he works in Hell's Kitchen, so obviously she's not, I didn't think she was going to move there, but maybe she would have a branch of his company there. Yeah, she works for Nelson and Murdoch, and that is a long-standing thing in the comics, so I didn't expect that to change. She works for no, Murdoch. No, he does. Nelson yeah, and that's Murdoch. What I'm saying. Oh, okay. Like she joins his because oh, she's fired. Okay, I see what you meant. Okay. Yeah, she's fired uh, because of what she did as She Hulk. When yeah, but didn't they the didn't they get rid of that? Like because at the very end of the series, she's going the back to charges work. were dropped. But it, no, at the end of the series, it shows her going into court because she's suing uh, Todd. Oh, that's right. Okay, you're right. It, I don't think it verified that she got rehired. Okay, you're right, you're right. Just that her friends were still working for her former employer because they do pay them well. Yeah. Uh, Nikki and Pug, I think. There was there was a rumor going around online. I don't agree with it. I'd be cool if it was true, but I don't think it is. So in the series, Jennifer Walters is the only one who breaks the fourth wall, right? Um, mm, sort of, because when she does break, like, in the very first episode, when she breaks the force wall by looking at us, and Hulk looks at us, too, but then he kind of breaks the that wall again, like, saying, who are you talking to, or who are you looking at? Yeah, see, uh, I don't think he broke the force wall. And then later on, she breaks it again, and Nikki, like, almost like looks at a or does respond to us like she looks at us and doesn't question it like she almost is in in on it and that is the rumor again i don't believe this it'd be cool people are saying that nikki which is her best friend right yes that when she does that in that scene people are like the only other people who's ever broken the fourth wall besides jennifer is agatha from wandavision so they're thinking like what if this is Agatha in disguise as Nikki. Again, yeah, I don't agree with that. I at don't all. agree with that at all. But you, like know how, she, you know how the internet is. Remember the Mephisto thing from WandaVision. Yeah. So, first off, as far as we know, Agatha is still stuck as a suburbanite who doesn't have any memories of being a witch. Exactly. Like, exactly. As far as they have not done anything about her from that. Um, I, that's why I didn't agree with it. But like. It's the internet. You know, they always make stuff up. Now, she could be a witch because Agatha is supposed to be getting her own show, I think. Right, right. Uh, so Nikki maybe might be a witch in Agatha's coven because I think it is about Agatha's coven or something. Wouldn't that be cool, though, if that was a tie-in? That would be a really cool uh, thing. I would, 
I would really hope that they don't make it to where Nikki's a bad guy, though. Yeah, I really like N- Nikki's character in the show. Like, if, if they were like, oh, yeah, she's related to a witch in Agatha's Coven. She has some of the powers of a witch, so she's kind of a good witch, like uh, like Scar- Wanda was Like before. Scarlet Witch. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, like Wanda was before the Dark Home got its claws in her. Uh, like, then... I would, I'd be okay with that, uh, but I re- if they did make her a witch of Agatha's Coven, I wouldn't want her to be a bad witch. Yeah, that that's just something I saw floating around the internet, and I was just like, I don't agree, but it would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. So another thing, what did you think about uh, Pug? Which one's Pug again? Pug was the male lawyer friend. Oh, the guy who's like, I don't want to go into this meeting. I don't want to. Yeah, like, the super innocent dude. (laughs) I have something to comment about the meeting where he infiltrates the the gathering. No one questions that he has an earbud in. No one. Well, no. Again, well, first off, like Nikki said, he's not the only one. In the thing, you can see other people with, like, just earbuds in. I don't remember seeing any of those. Because, first off, or another thing. Uh, like it's 2022. People have earbuds in public all the time. Yeah, but still, it's supposed to be a like a secret gathering. You'd think they would be like, "Hey guys, no recording devices or technology like that here." I really don't feel like it was a that secret of a gathering. Uh, I don't know. Heck, even Todd, who recognized him as a friend of She Hulk, was like, "Oh yeah, hey man, I knew you were one of us." Like. Yeah, they, he's like the whole group that, were not, and he was not. like bad acting of like, oh yeah, women are terrible. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, man, and I'm like, she hopes the worst. I just felt so bad for Pug because he uh, he's like, I don't, I don't like saying this crap. <laughs> and yeah, he's how's got it Nikki feel in his work? ear yelling at him. Yeah, <laughs> how does it feel yeah. working for She Hulk? She sucks, doesn't she? Yeah, man, She Hulk's terrible. Uh. Well, the reason I brought up uh, Pug, do you recognize him? He looks familiar. He played in a show that uh, you and I liked and watched a lot of, uh, Arrow. Was he like, was he Arrow's best friend? No, he was the guy that, uh, he was like the evil Arrow that nearly brought down Oliver. You talking about Malcolm? No, hold on. I'm, uh, Adrian Chase. Oh yes, he is the bad guy. Yeah, like he was the he. I want. I think he was the DA. I'm not entirely sure that befriended Oliver, but only because he was trying to get close to him, and then did a complete betrayal. Like, oh, spoilers on Arrow, by the way. Yeah, let's not get into Arrow, please. We're talking about She Hulk. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so that actor is from there, and I've it's. The only thing I've ever actually seen him from, so I was really glad that he's gotten some new work. So the last thing I want to bring up as uh, about the show and the com- compared to the comics is, so we watched that movie Eternals, which I didn't enjoy, um, but at the end of Eternals, they introduce a character, Thanos' brother, was it Fox, I think, something like that? Star Fox. Star Fox. So in the comic books, Star Fox is on trial. And it's for sexual assault. And the lawyer that is going against him is Jennifer Walters. So I was, re- or was I can't remember if he was defending him or prosecuting him. I don't remember. Anyways, he was a humongous tie-in to the comics. So I was really hoping, because they haven't shown anything besides that little snippet of Star Fox and Eternals, that we would see some kind of appearance of Star Fox in the show, even if it's a small cameo, because it's a tie into She Hulk. And I was kind of disappointed we didn't, to be honest. I really I mean, I can understand. I really because... wanted, like, even if it's a post credit scene of, like, oh man, I gotta go to this. She's like, oh, I gotta go to this next witness of mine or something, and it's him. Or something like that. I can understand, because uh, Harry Styles. Is was doing other stuff. I totally forgot it was Harry Styles, to be honest. 
Yeah, he he played Star Fox. Um, and also, I don't think I think they abandoned the whole Star Fox thing. Did they? I don't know. I'm not sure. I just sure. remember it really, th- really not enjoying Eternals, and that was the only part of Eternals. I was like, hey, I know Star Fox. I know that guy. That's Thanos' brother, and I only know that because of She-Hulk comics. Because in the comic books, during that trial, they bring um, they bring Thanos in as to someone to speak on his brother's behalf. So that's the only reason I knew about it. So, uh, what did you think about the last episode's intro? I don't even remember the intro. The beginning of the last episode oh, oh. was a homage to the original I loved it. series. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. And yeah. when it was going on, my wife, who knows nothing about the original series, was like, what the hell is going on? And I had to pause it and explain, like, this is an homage to the Lou Ferrigno Hulk from the 70s. And she goes, I have no idea who that is. It's like, oh, sad. So sad. Yeah. Uh, so originally when that happened or when they saw or when I saw this, I thought that it was a uh, actress who was the uh, body double for She-Hulk in the show. Like they were actually no, bringing there's her no way because that is, onto- isn't it all just CGI. Well, it is CGI for the majority of it, but her the physical aspects is an actual woman. Oh, it is. I figured yes. it was just the actress who played Jennifer Walters and just throw a bunch of CGI on her. Uh, but it was actually a guy named Devin Lewis. That was a guy. Yeah. Uh, but still, it was really cool. Um, all especially like every. All the styles and everything. Like, they made, they changed the clothing style, the hairstyle of Bruce and Jen. Like, it, I just, it was awesome. Yeah. It was probably one of the best parts of the show, to be honest. Yeah. And then to go from that awesome little, like, slice of different era to modern day Disney uh, and her going throughout the studio to find her writers, like, and I love how she threatens the writers, like, do you want me yeah. to freaking do this myself? Yeah, and then they're like, uh, we would kill you for Kevin. <laughs> like, she's like, hmm, you, you guys are really creepy. I'm going to go talk yeah, to Kevin. Yeah, she's like, I like to speak to Kevin. And they're like, <laughs> do you want to talk to Kevin? Like, it's that easy. Yeah, it is, it is hilarious how, like, almost godlike kevin is to the whole mcu and it's funny i saw tiktok explaining this about how they were so like potent on their details that the robot kevin even had a hat because kevin always wears hats when he goes to things and i was like that's hilarious yeah it has a uh, shadow guard over the lenses that make it look like a baseball caps cap well, you, uh, if you got anything else to say, Nate, about the She-Hulk series as a whole? Uh, no, other than I, I'm i really hoping they do a second season. They're in talks. They haven't said yeah. yes or no. Like I said, this is probably the most controversial MCU show we've gotten so far. So I don't know, man. And a five, considering... out of t- 5 out of 10 is not great for an MCU show. Yeah. Considering that we are about to get Deadpool and Wolverine into the MCU. Uh, or not even the MCU. It could be like an alternate universe kind of thing. But it's Deadpool the, is Ed, Dead, Deadpool's coming to the MCU. Wolverine. Yeah. I think Wolverine will not. All right, no, let's, get a little tan- not let's get a little tangent to this because they just announced it. So my thoughts on the whole Wolverine thing. First of all, I am the only person that has ever said anything about this who's a little disappointed that Hugh Jackman is back at Wolverine. Ah, stop all the comments. Stop all the hate. Hold on. Because I wanted to see a newer guy play Wolverine. And that could still happen. Yes, it's awesome that Hugh Jackman's back. He's gonna, but I think this is going to be the final close to his Wolverine. I truly do. Uh, considering that Logan is technically the final close of Wolverine, I am ecstatic to find that Ryan Reynolds got him to come back. 
But I do not think that Hugh Jackman is going to play Wolverine in the actual MCU. See, I that's what I think. I think that he's going to come in as a Wolverine that was saved by Daredevil or not Daredevil by a Deadpool. Because remember, at the end of Deadpool two, he's time he's going through all the time travel shit, and I think he's going to pluck that Wolverine from Logan, or even if it's a later iteration of Wolverine before Logan, um, and he's going to save him from dying. And he's going to yeah. come to the MCU, and something's going to happen where he ends up actually dying. And it's going to, if they bring Wolverine in with the X Men, I almost said Avengers, with the X Men, I think that it's going to be a younger, new actor Wolverine from another timeline or another dimension or something like that. Because the X Men is all over the place with that crap. Yeah. Uh, I want to get back to the Deadpool thing real quick. But before that, with your younger Wolverine thing, I would absolutely love if they did do one of the three uh, younger Wolverines because there are three... He does have, technically, three children. You know who I think... Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I, I just thought of this. I see them bringing in Wolverine and him dying like he did in Logan and X-23 comes as the new... Wolverine in the MCU. Yeah. She she is one of the ones that I would want if they were to bring Wolverine in. Because in the comics, she is the current Wolverine. Yeah. I would prefer James Hudson. Uh, is that Dakin? The, no. Uh, well, so James Hudson is the son of Wolverine from the Ultimate Marvel Universe. And I that, like, of the three children... I like James Hudson more because I like he's basically Wolverine 2.0. Uh, he doesn't have the adamantium on his bones. He has an organic metal like Psy or uh, like Colossus yeah. has organic metal on his skin. Um, so James Hudson, I would like to see, especially because he doesn't really get very much love, really. Uh, so I would like to see him get a bit more. Yeah. But so, really, any of the three, yeah. I would love to see come in. So, before we end the podcast, I just remembered something we didn't talk about in She-Hulk. Something. Well, be Go ahead. Before Deadpool, the reason I brought up Deadpool is because I would love to see Deadpool and Jen just destroy the fourth wall. Like, both, like She-Hulk comments to them, and Deadpool be like, "Oh wait." Oh, you can see them too. Like they just started talking to each other. Like, oh, oh, this is so great. Everyone looks like I'm crazy. Yeah, see that like, guy. That dude's weird. <laughs> yeah, like it would be an amazing little interaction. I I want to see that at some point down the road. So the thing I was talking about, something extremely important that we didn't bring up in the final episode of She Hulk. Hulk has a son. Yes, uh, Hulk has Scar. a freaking son. Yes. That's Scar insanely from, uh, important. The So, I was actually, like, on one hand, I'm curious to see how they're going to do this. Because, uh, from my understanding, Scar is from the World War Hulk. Yeah, he is the child Storyline. that was born when he had a child with an alien from another race on the planet he crashed on. And, uh, Sakar. Yeah, and she died, and he didn't know the child was survived the death, and so he went back to Earth. And if I remember right, in the comics, he came to Earth for revenge on the Hulk for abandoning him as a child or killing his mother, something along those lines. And he's a villain in the beginning. Yeah. So, so I don't know how the MCU is going to handle that. I didn't read. The I didn't read the Hulk comics or anything like that. I everything I know about Scar is what others have told me. Same. I did read up a bit of a a bit about Scar, and I gotta say, like just whole aesthetically and power wise, I I look forward to it because from what I've seen, it's as if you take the Hulk, mix him with Conan, and then give him earthbending powers. Conan, you know the the guy from the Saturday Night Live, uh, James. Oh, that's James Corden, not Conan. 
<laughs> I was trying to make a joke and I failed miserably. Uh, Conan is the other late show or late night. That's what I was thinking of. I got them all mixed Retired. up. Wow, what a failed flop of a... What a momentum killer that was. Uh, but no, like, from what I understand, he's supposed to be like a earthbender who can enhance his powers through the power of planets. Like... I think that, that this is, epic. yeah, I think this is their, because they're getting rid of all of the OG Avengers. Hulk is going to be one of them, and I think Jennifer Walters is going to be more of a background, like, I'm going to handle the legal stuff of superheroes, kind of yeah. like she is in the comics. So I think that this is a way to bring in a new Hulk for the new young Avengers that they're obviously forming for the MCU, and he's going to be their Hulk. So... I hope that's not the case. Really? Because, so the Young Avengers had a Hulk, a younger Hulk. Oh, He's I didn't not know that. actually a Hulk, though. He's a shapeshifter that takes the form of a Hulk. Uh, his name is Hulkling. Oh, yeah. So I saw somebody talk about that on TikTok. It's like the Hulkling lines may also come to the MCU because we have Hulk have a son now. Yeah, we have seen... Well, Hulkling isn't... I don't think he's related to Bruce at all. Well, World War uh, Hulk, the, he he has sons, a bunch of messed up, horrible yeah. sons. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Hulkling is just a shapeshifter in the Marvel Universe who takes on a Hulk-like form when he joins the Young Avengers. But I mean, his we power have, is shapeshifting. We have seen a shapeshifter in the She-Hulk series. Yeah. Uh, we have that... Uh, elf chick yeah uh, which they don't explain much about either no uh they have to do a lot of like minor characters that they don't explain we've already seen a lot of the young avengers show up in the various shows right throughout the marvel universe we've so, even seen ironheart in the new uh wakanda forever trailer yeah we've seen wanda's children uh i forget their names but i, I don't yeah. remember yeah, they were. They were I, important, I still can't. Get, I still can't get over the Ralph Boner thing. Uh, and Falcon and Winter Soldier. They introduced uh, one of them. Who was it? The grandson of the African American right. Super Soldier. Yes, I remember. And then obviously Hawkeye. It's pretty obvious who the Young Avenger is in that one. Yeah. So it does look like Scar will probably be their Hulk version, but I. Would really like to see Hulkling come in to play because to get rid of him would be a disservice, I think. Yeah. Well, if you got anything else for the podcast today, Nate? Nope. That's about it. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed the podcast, uh, listeners, and thank you guys for coming out and listening. If you are interested in more content, you can check out my link tree, which shows all of our other accounts. If you liked uh, like this, then please think about liking and subscribing. If you are interested in talking about upcoming topics, please join us on our Discord and Facebook page. You can also see my Twitter, which is also in the bio, uh, and all the links description and below. We'll see you guys on the next podcast.